Let us understand what is meant by the independent float of an activity. In the earlier videos, we have seen the terms total float of an activity, interfering float of an activity, free float of an activity, and slack of an event. The total float of an activity is the maximum delay allowable without impacting the overall completion time of the project. The interfering float is that part of the total float which when used will have an impact on the float of the following activities. However, it will not impact the overall completion time of the project. Free float of an activity is that part of the total float which when used will not have any impact on the floats of the following activity and of course will not impact the completion time of the entire project. Slack of an event is the maximum possible delay available for an event to occur. It is also defined as the latest occurrence time of an event minus the earliest occurrence time of the event. So we are looking at activity F that the total float available for activity F is 16 minus 1 which is 15 days. Out of these 15 days, one day which is the head slack is the interfering float and 15 minus 1 is the free float available for activity F. Now we also saw that if we use the interfering float for activity F then the float of activity K is impacted. However, if we use the free float for activity F there is no impact on the float of activity K. Now here we were not looking at the preceding activity for activity F and we were assuming that all the other activities are happening at the earliest start and finish times and we had the flexibility to change the schedule of activity F. Now for activity F, C is the preceding activity and K is the following activity. So if we have to find out the delay possible in activity F without affecting the preceding or the following activity that delay is known as the independent float or IDF. So if you take the example of activity F the earliest start time is day 1 and the latest start time is day 16. Now activity C has a latest finish time of day 14. So if we have to give the maximum flexibility to activity C that it can finish on the latest finish times and if we also have to give the flexibility to activity K that it can start on its earliest start time then how much is the flexibility available for activity F. So as we just said the flexibility available for activity F is the time between the earliest start time for the following activity minus the latest finish time of the preceding activity and within that time that is 23 minus 14 we have to complete activity F. So IDF for activity F will be equal to the earliest start time for activity K minus the latest finish time for activity C minus the duration for activity F which is 8. So the time taken for activity F. So this is equal to 23 minus 14 minus 8. So 23 minus 14 is 9 minus 8 
this is equal to one day now let's try to arrive at a generic definition for calculating the independent float so independent float will be equal to the available time for activity let's say the name is ij so it starts at say i and finishes at say j minus the performance time for activity ij or the duration for activity ij where i and j are generic start and end nodes so the available time for activity ij is the difference between the earliest start time of the following activity minus the latest finish time of the preceding activity so the following activity would be jk and the preceding activity would be h i so h i j k so the activity in consideration for which we are calculating the idf is i j the following activity is j k and the preceding activity is h i so available time for activity i j is earliest start time for j k minus the latest finish time for activity h i minus the duration for the activity t i j so this is one way of calculating the independent float of an activity there is another way of calculating the independent float which is equal to the free float minus tail slack so in one of the earlier videos for slack of an event we had understood the term head slack which is the slack of the event touching the head of the arrow of the activity tail slack is the slack of the event which is towards the tail of the arrow so here in this case the slack for event 4 is considered as the tail slack for activity f but it is the head slack for activity c so let us understand this definition here so idf is equal to free float minus the tail slack free float because we don't want to use the interfering float as it impacts the following activities so if we don't want to change the float of the following activity we should not be using the interfering float so the maximum we can use for this activity is the free float and of course the tail slack for this activity would be the head slack for the preceding activity so we want to give the maximum flexibility to the preceding activity for scheduling so if we deduct the tail slack from the free float then we'll get the independent float so in this case the free float for activity f is 14 days and the tail slack is 13 days which is equal to one day now let us take another example and try to calculate the idf let's take the example of activity d so for activity d let's first find the free float 
so let's do it here so tf is equal to if plus free float free float is equal to tf minus if now the total float for activity d is 20 minus 7 which is 13 and independent float is the head slack so at the head of this activity the event is event number 5 and the slack for this event is 1 so the free float is 12 days and the equation is that IDF is equal to free float minus tail slack so IDF is equal to free float which is 12 days minus so for D the tail event is event number 3 and the slack at this event is 13 days so this is 13 so 12 minus 13 which is minus 1 so in case the independent float comes as negative value we consider this as 0 so the IDF for activity D is 0 days